Little Red Riding Hood, a politically correct fairy tale. There was once a young person named Red Riding Hood who lived with her mother on the edge of a large wood. One day, her mother asked her to take a basket of fresh fruit and mineral water to her grandmother's house. Not because this was woman's work, mind you, but because the deed was generous and helped engender a feeling of community. Furthermore, her grandmother was not sick, but rather was in full physical and mental health and was fully capable of taking care of herself as a mature adult. So Red Riding Hood set off with her basket of food through the woods. Many people she knew believed that the forest was a foreboding and dangerous place and never set foot in it. Red Riding Hood, however, was confident. On her way to Grandma's house, Red Riding Hood was accosted by a wolf who asked her what was in her basket. She replied, Some healthful snacks for my grandmother, who's certainly capable of taking care of herself as a mature adult. The wolf said, Well, you know, my dear, it isn't safe for a little girl to walk through these woods alone. Red Riding Hood said, I find your sexist remark offensive in the extreme, but I will ignore it because of your traditional status as an outcast from society, the stress of which has caused you to develop your own entirely valid worldview. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must be on my way. Red Riding Hood walked on along the main path, but because his status outside society had freed him from slavish adherence to linear Western-style thought, the wolf knew of a quicker route to Grandma's house. He burst into the house and ate Grandma, an entirely valid course of action for a carnivore such as himself. Then, unhampered by rigid traditionalist notions of what was masculine or feminine, he put on Grandma's night clothes and crawled into bed. Red Riding Hood entered the cottage and said, Grandma! I've brought you some fat-free, sodium-free snacks to salute you in your role of a wise and nurturing matriarch. From the bed, the wolf said softly, Come closer, child, so that I might see you. Red Riding Hood said, Oh, I forgot you're as optically challenged as a bat. Grandma, what big eyes you have. <laughs> They've seen much and forgiven much, my dear. Grandma, what a, a big nose you have. Only relatively, of course, and certainly attractive in its own way. <laughs> it has smelled much and forgiven much, my dear. Grandma, what big teeth you have. The wolf said, I am happy with and what I am. And leaped out of bed. He grabbed Red Riding Hood in his claws, intent on devouring her. Red Riding Hood screamed. <laughs> Not out of alarm of the wolf's apparent tendency towards cross-dressing, but because of his willful invasion of her personal space. Her screams were heard by a passing wood chopper person, or a log fuel technician as he preferred to be called. When he burst into the cottage, he saw the melee and tried to intervene. But as he raised his axe, Red Riding and the wolf both stopped. And um, what do you think you're doing? Asked Red Riding Hood. The woodchopper person blinked and tried to answer, but no words came out of him. Bursting in here like a Neanderthal, trusting your weapon to do your thinking for you. She said. Sexist. Speciesist. How dare you assume that women and wolves can't solve their own problems without a man's help. When she heard Red Riding Hood's speech, Grandma jumped out of the mouth, took the woodchopper's person's axe, and cut his head off. After this ordeal, Red Riding Hood, Grandma, and the wolf felt a certain commonality of purpose. They decided to set up an alternative household based on mutual respect and cooperation, and they lived together in the woods happily ever after.